Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now we've had a lot of response and comments come through about how we actually get water to our chicken coop and vegetable garden and what sort of systems do we use. So what I thought I'd quickly do is give you a little, little video now about how we've set up the watering system for the chicken coop and also the vegetables and we can go from there. So basically what we've done is We've got a, I think this is around about a three and a half thousand litre water tank. Now, when we first set up the, the chicken coop here, that three and a half thousand wasn't quite enough to catch that um, intermediate rainfall that we had over summer. So we've introduced another one here, which is again, another three and a half thousand. So we've got 7,000 litres here that fill the, and water the chickens and, and water the um, vegetables and everything else. Now, the way that we've put everything together is a solar system. So what we have here is I've got a, an old um, solar panel on the roof here, which is from an old domestic situation. So that's a 300 watt um, unit up there. Now, that solar panel comes down to this little box here. Now, this little box here is the solar regulator. So that turns my, I think that's around about a 40 volt system. Um, yeah, 40 volt, 300 watt. This little regulator here converts that back into a lower voltage to charge some batteries. Now, that output there, I think is preset at around about 14.4 volts, which is what we need for a standard 12 volt battery system. Now, what I've also done here is just got a little isolator, isolator switch here. So that's on at the moment and off. So they've got no power running anywhere. Turn it back on and done. So I just leave that on because the way that we've set this up is everything's automatic. So I don't need to come up here and hand water or anything like that. All I need to do is come in here is I need to look after the chickens, pick up my morning eggs, for my omelets, pick whatever vegetables we have to do, a little bit of pruning on the tomatoes or whatever it may be, and then I'm back down doing something else. So the way that this is all set up is these two water tanks are set up as one. And this is my main feed here from those water tanks. Now, what we have is I've got union joints everywhere so that I can pretty much undo these union joints service the water pump, whatever it may be. So it's an easy breakage, undo, undo, and that's just got a little O-ring seal. So if I need to service something, I can undo it, or if I need to replace my water pump at whatever time, I can do that without pulling the whole system apart. Now, as water comes through, we have a little filter, and that came in the kit with the, um, the Seaflow diaphragm pump. Now, this little pump here is around about 20 litres a minute five gallons, I think, is the, the, the um, conversion. And then as it starts pumping out, you can see that I've got two lines. Now, I've got one line here, which is the direct feed. Now, that direct feed looks after a standard garden hose and for hosing down bits and pieces. And that also looks after the chicken's watering needs. And I'll explain a little bit further when we go inside. This side here goes to the veggie gardens. Now, that just runs through a standard timer. Now, this particular one is a Holman. Um, I imagine there's a thousand different units out there. And from the timer, I can then pre-program this to um, what, chick what vegetable garden I want to water. So as an example, line one looks after all my summer crop needs and line two looks after all my winter crop needs. So as an example, for those who know the chicken coop, so you've got bays one, two, and three are looked after on line one, four, five, and six are looked after on line two. And I can program this, this little timer, so it comes on automatically. Now I've got that currently set at every second day, I think it's, a, you know, let's say 3.30 in the afternoon, whatever it may be, for about 45 minutes to an hour, and I can't quite remember how long I've actually got that set up, because it's been set up that way for a long time. Now, and I'll show you how I connect to this in the chicken coop. 
Now, so what I've got here is just as a little bit of a recap, I run a, um, a 12 volt system, deep cycle batteries. Now, you can see two down here, and Murphy Law does tell me this, that my old deep cycle battery, which was an old one, um, that finally gave the ghost. And I've kept some spares from um, the solar unit down at the homestead, so I've still gonna pick up a box. Now, these are two six volt systems. I think these ones are around about 200 amp. So the solar panel, charges these and what i'm finding is that the well what from the the pump house because i can take that as the example is that i can get around about five days with no sun on the 200 amp system perfect perfect for those dry winter days all right so i'll tell you what let's go next door we'll check out the um the chicken coop and the watering system in there so i'll see you soon now, as a part of the chicken coop, you would have seen as the in the tour of video that we have, our central corridor here is roofed. Now, that's close to around about 40 square metres. So for every mil of rain, we're getting 40, mil, 40 litres of rain as a catchment. Now, over the summer months, that's super, super important. And pretty much everything that I've got here as a structure has some sort of roof on it so that we can catch um, rainfall. So it all comes into this little gutter system above me and then runs through this standard um, stormwater pipe or yes, yeah, stormwater pipe, and then fills up my rain tanks from there. Now, there are times during the summer where we just don't have that rainfall. And I noticed that last year. So. What we've done is we've set up, and if you again go back into um, a video, I think it's called the Seaflow 12 volt pump solar or something of the sort like that, that I've got a direct link now from our top dam. I'm siphoning out, well, pumping out from that point, running all the way back down to here to fill up these there. So I can just sit there and I've got a manifold system that I can just open and close, um, and then I can fill up from that pump house because previously what I was doing is carting water and it makes it really really hard and time consuming so this way I flick a switch I go have some lunch come back I know that it's full and I turn it off so how good is that mate it is fantastic so I'll tell you what we'll go inside and I'll show you how I've set up everything internally so I'll see you soon all right so here we are back into the main corridor of the chicken coop. Now, if you remember back, we've got those two lines that I said we had coming into the chicken coop. One was a direct feed, and one was coming through on the timing system. So I wanna talk about the direct feed to start with. Now, what we've got here is, this is just my standard um, garden tap. So I can just turn this on. Oh, that's a bit hard and I've got direct access from those water tanks. Now you might've heard the little pump kick in and I'll see if you can pick that up again. Hopefully you can hear that. There's like a little hum that's coming through. So that's a part of our direct feed system um, into the chicken coop. Now what we've also had that plumbed into is our cleaning station. So when we bring through our vegetables we process them all on this bench here and I can wash them and I have running water like so we just put the plug in the sink wash all our veggies and it's all done mate how good's that now that direct feed also comes up further here which is this line here and I was thinking to myself, how can I make sure that the chickens have a constant source of water, but something that wasn't too big or too small or whatever it may be. So what I thought I'd do is I've got this little bucket from the hardware store and it just has a little lid on it and that's full. So that's, I think that's around about 10 litres. Now what I've done is from the hardware store, I've picked up a tall toilet um, system float valve system and I, that just gets connected to the bottom there now that has a float in it so remember like when you press the toilet button 
the water goes down and then comes back up and stops automatically at a predetermined um, measurement. So we've got exactly the same system in here. Now, so I've always got water in this header tank and that just comes down via gravity. And I've got two sort of systems here. I set this one up firstly, these little water cups. Now, I've seen them work. I don't know, I might have special chickens or something, but it just didn't work for the chickens that I've got here. Like, I think I've seen one actually use it. So I thought, oh, well, if they're not using it, I'm gonna have to introduce another system. So this is just a standard little, um, I don't even know what you call it, a stock trough or, but it's tiny. So I think this one has around about three to four liters in it. And again, I've just got an isolation valve here, but inside behind is a float valve. So as the chickens um, drink from here, the water drops down and that just fills up. A little bug in there. So they've always got a fresh source of water. And this system for us has been running since really the um, conception of what we wanted to do here at the chicken coop. And it is working a treat, an absolute treat. Now, just as a bit of a, a touch base, I'm just running 25 mil pressure pipe all the way through. All right, and that's just got pressure glue on it so that everything's nice and tight. You can see I've got union valves everywhere so that if I need to service something, that I can just undo these union valves and I can get into the header tank here and I can service the um, system float should I need it. I haven't had a problem yet, but just in case. So what I'll do now is bring you back to the vegetable garden side of things. So I'll see you in bay number one and we'll go from there. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are in our garden bay number one. Now, if you've been following through and watching the tomatoes, check this out, mate. They have now reached over 1.8 and they're still going. I'm up here every second day, twying them up. Pretty exciting, pretty exciting. Now, come down here and have a look. This is the way that I've set up the, um, the ball valves. Now, as a part of, can you see that there? That's just a standard ball valve running onto my dripper hose. Now, I've got it running at the moment and you can see it's all just dripping out like so. But as an example, if I needed to shut this one down, what have I got here? I can just turn that. So this bay is now turned off. But because I've got everything on a timer, I just leave that open and that fully irrigates the whole area through here. Now, the way that, again, that we've set all this up is that we plant on every one of those drips and, um, and we go from there. Now, I'm just looking sort of next to me. We've probably got a clearer picture in um, garden, veggie garden number uh, two. So I'll have a look in there because I've got that running as well. We've just set that one up. So I'll see you next door. All right, so here we are in, um, in veggie garden number two. Now, this one was a bit of a spare of the moment sort of, um, sort of scenario. We hadn't planned on doing this one so soon, but the season, because it was so late, it's really kicked off. So I didn't want to sort of waste any time in reference to our vegetable um, produce and, and harvest. But you can see here is probably a clearer picture that I've got this one running as well. Now, that's the same sort of ball, um, ball valve setup. I just have it connected to um, the drip irrigation hose. And that's just got a standard hose fitting on that. So I can turn that on and off as an example, like so. So I can just connect my hose back in. Now, it's important to note what I've done is I've just turned our timer on manually. Um, just to sort of give you an idea of, of what's going on. So our irrigation system just runs straight through and this gives all our vegetables that, we, um, that we're planting um, a better, a, um, a sort of a, a, a better start. Now, a lot of these vegetables here, we raise or we use seeds all the way through. So 
you'll see I've got zucchinis and onions and capskins and eggplants and tomatoes and so this is our, our second harvest. So this is purely what I need the irrigation for is that this sort of setup get these guys up and running nice and easily. They'll cause, get some shadowing causing and, um, and then we can go from there. So as a bit of a recap, we've looked at how we capture our water, how the pump is set up and how I've got it feeding the chicken coop and also the veggie garden here. So, mate, fantastic. Easy for me, easy for fat cow farm. Easy for our vegetables. Won't be long before we're um, picking up our tomatoes and everything else. The system works really, really well. So don't forget, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.